This Mimus A7 FPGA development board uses an FTDI 2232H chip, which, as I've been learning about it, I've discovered that this is actually a very cool chip. It's pretty much a Swiss Army knife of FTDI chips. Apparently, this chip actually has two different channels. You have channel A and channel B, and the way that Numato Lab, who's the manufacturer of this board, the way that they have it configured is that down here, um, channel B is set up under this MPSSE configuration, um, and that allows for programming with JTAG, SPI, things like that, which allows us to load the bitstream onto the board over USB, rather than using one of Xilinx's expensive JTAG adapters. So that's cool. I'm still a little bit confused um, as which of these other modes channel A is in, but the Numato Labs does say that channel A is free to use for custom things. Um, and so you can see some of the options that we have are RS-232, which would be UART. You have synchronous, 245 FIFO, and then this would be asynchronous. Um, and synchronous FIFO here is the fastest communication that the board supports. It goes up to 60 megahertz, and people have been known to transmit at 42 megabits per second, which is quite fast. Um, but if you have it in this mode, it appears that it uses all of the FT2232's resources, and so you can't use channel B if you're in this mode. Um, and so that leads me to believe that it is by default configured with the 245 FIFO for channel A. Um, and the reason that I think that is when I look at the schematic for this board, I can see, so I'm, I'm currently looking at the, um, this is the schematic for the FF2232. So this is the FTDI chip. And you can see on channel A, we have data zero through seven, RXF, TXE, and these are particular for um, FT245 um, protocol. And so if you look back at the data sheet, you can see here's D0 through 7, RXF, and TXE. Um, so I, I believe that this is the mode, the other mode for channel A on this FTDI chip, and so I'm going to try to communicate with it using this instead of what most people would typically use, which would be UART. This data sheet is one of my favorite data sheets. They go into everything and they explain it so well. So look at this. Um, so they've, they've defined earlier in the data sheet that the mode selection for the two channels is determined by reading the EEPROM when the chip boots up. Um, so you can have an external EEPROM. And so here is the question, do I need an EEPROM? And you can see, here's the list of all of the different modes that the two channels can be configured into. And these are the ones that you need an EEPROM to configure. So if you want UART, you're gonna to have to program the, e the EEPROM to, to do that. Um, or then this is, you can send a command over the USB cable to configure the channels to do these different modes. So that's pretty cool.